Hello to the thousands of new subscribers and viewers from around the world, hopefully not just the UK. This is a new channel, but expect regular uploads starting in January, so subscribe for more. I'm here to guide you on the parts of the UK that aren't really talked about. London, Shunden. Cambridge, Shamebridge. Bath, you're having a laugh. Just 16% of England's population lives in London, so to see the rest, you've got to leave. With the crazy house prices and holiday prices going on in the UK right now, I want to show you that you can still nab a bargain, but you may want to avoid the places on this list. And if you live in or grew up in any of the places on the list today, let us know your experiences of living there. Let's first of all take a look at the worst places to live in my home county where I grew up in Somerset, which is an area known as the West Country. This is a collection of counties in the west of England. To many of you, this is just a green blur that you speed past on the M5 motorway to Devon and Cornwall. It has a reputation of being nothing but farms. Somerset has some beauty, but it tends to be overlooked because it doesn't have the golden beaches of Dorset, Devon or Cornwall. But it is an excellent gateway to those places and life tends to be a bit slower here. So if you're on the move or just interested on in where to avoid on holiday, stick around because each of my picks on this list is here for a bad reason. Let's get into it. The 8 Crap Towns of Somerset. Number 8. Chard. Chard is a really weird place. It's pretty small with a population of just 13,000. It's also pretty isolated. It's barely even Somerset, it's only about 3 miles from the Devon border. On the surface of it, Chard looks to be a pretty nice place. Both times I visited, the weather was sunny, and when the sun shines, things don't feel as bad. The high street has some nice old buildings. It's also got a reservoir, and it's not far from the south coast and places like Lyme Regis. But like a prepubescent spot, you just have to dig a bit deeper for all your pus to come flying out. Chard is a place which has high crime rates, which is pretty insane for the size of the place, with a crime rate of 77 in 1000. This is 22% higher than normal rates. I don't know what it is. Violence and sexual offences are the most common in Chard. It's the second worst for crime for its size in Somerset. Chard apparently used to be much rougher. I'm not going to go too hard on old Chard, because it is in a nice area, and there is potentially going to be a new train station that will help it feel a bit less isolated. House prices are cheap at only an average of 226000 but the statistics don't lie, and Chard has more crime than most places its size. It does look okay on a sunny day though. Number 7. Glastonbury Yes, there is a town called Glastonbury, which believe it or not, the world's famous festival is named after, because, you guessed it, it's in some fields several miles away. The festival's actually closer to the town of Shepton Mallet, so that's a failure right there. Glastonbury has made the list today, not because it's particularly bad, and no offence to anyone who lives there, but I'm not sure it's everybody's cup of tea. This small town on the Somerset levels has a population of 9,000. From the distance, it has a great look as it's built partially on a hill and has the world's famous Glastonbury tour behind it from many angles. I recently looked at buying a house here because I quite like the place, but I was shocked by my research. Glastonbury tops the latest crime figures for small towns in Somerset of a whopping 102 crimes per 1,000 residents last year. Most crimes were either antisocial or violence. The main population census is 97.8% white, and you'll find that's a pretty similar sort of figure to most of the towns on this list. If you're looking to get a job in Glastonbury, think again. Glastonbury has terrible unemployment rates at close to 10%. How much of that has been caused by the pandemic, we'll have to see. This is primarily a place which relies on tourism, and without it, throughout the pandemic, the people suffered. Oh yeah, and there's no train line, so you can feel a bit isolated here. Along with this, the house prices averaged at 259000 last year, which whilst not terrible, there are a lot cheaper places on this list. You would expect to pay a bit less for the most violent small town in Somerset. The main area to avoid is the Brenton Hill area, which reported the most crimes last year. The main reason for Glastonbury's inclusion on this list is the eccentricness of the place. Most of the town's residents look like they've been left over from the last Glastonbury festival. Aging rockers line the pretty main street from top to bottom, just kind of sitting down waiting for the next festival to take place. It doesn't bother me, but I know some people may not quite vibe with this. They are absolutely everywhere and the shops cater to them, they're certainly on the quirky side. If you like crystal shops, this is the place for you. In its favour, it has a lot of shops for a place of its size, and it also has a massive retail outlet called Clark's Village, which is quite close by. Glastonbury itself is quite nice to look at. The place, not the people who live here. And the surrounding areas are nice too. Glastonbury, I don't hate you, you're just a bit weird. There is no other place in England like Glastonbury. Number 6. Yatton 
Recently voted as the worst place to live in Somerset, falling 541 places in just 12 months, it's Yatton. Calling Yatton a town to start with feels like a stretch. It's essentially a road. Not that you can actually see the road through the bumper to bumper constant stream of cars built up through it. There's really nothing here. No banks, one small supermarket and a rugby club where most of the players and spectators are either in a relationship, related or possibly both. If however rugby is not your sport of choice, you can opt for train spotting or wife swapping. To its credit, the train station has great links, but I'd wager most of the travelling is outwards, not inwards. Nestled next to the picturesque village of Kingston Seymour, things turn south very quickly once you pass the bridge in. There are a few glimmers of hope in the cycle path known as the Strawberry Line, and new eatery, Feast. But truth be told, Yatton really did die on its ass around 15 years ago. Yatton is so proud of its stupid cycle path that it often uses it as a selling point for this place. It's just a narrow path with vision obscured by hedges on both sides rammed full of people. On a weekend, there's nothing relaxing about visiting this place. And at the end of the day, it's just a cycle path. There's got to be something more to life. There are currently two new housing estates on the outskirts of Yatton. So, I hear you say, the place is building upwards then. No, it's just that nearby places like Clevedon and Kongsbury have both ran out of space and have used Yatton as their overflow. And with the average house price of 323000 you would expect there to be something to do past 5pm. Somehow, Yatton is the most expensive inclusion on this list. <laughs> Which is laughable because the place is literally nothing. It's so dreary, come on Yatton. There's nothing here, there's nothing to like about it apart from when you leave the place. It's hard to know which direction Yatton needs to take. Do they need to build new infrastructure to allow for the amount of new residents making themselves bigger in the process? Or do they rest on their laurels as a small picturesque town try to push this agenda more? Either way, whatever they're doing now, it's not working. A simply dreary and boring pointless place to live. Number 5. Minehead Wait, Minehead? That's supposed to be pretty nice, isn't it, I hear you say? People come on holiday here from the middle of England and it boasts of Butlins and one of the very few sandy beaches in Somerset. Well, much like many of the UK seaside towns, you have to walk off the promenade and see the real Minehead. And it's not as bad as some of the later entries in this list, but it's not exactly a great place for a holiday. This seaside town with a population of 12,000 is also nestled between Exmoor and the Quantock Hills, both known for their beauty. Minehead itself is poorly stocked with shops considering how isolated it is. And don't go thinking you could do your shopping elsewhere. Your nearest option is Taunton, which is 25 miles away. And that leads me on nicely to talk about transport. This place sucks when it comes to getting around. You really only have two choices, the A39 or the A358. And they're both windy, small, and in the summer you've got no chance. A 25 mile journey can easily take an hour in the summer. Minehead does have a train line, which you might think would ease the congestion on the small roads in the summer. But no, they can't be bothered to open it properly and it just runs steam trains in the summer. It's almost like they enjoy you being stuck in your car. In the winter, Minehead is depressing, much like many of the UK seaside towns which pretty much close down altogether. And then in the summer, everything opens right up, but as a resident, you would have to deal with a bunch of boozy stag do's. All of this boozing has led to a slightly higher crime rate than the rest of the county at 63 crimes per thousand people. When Butlins is closed for the winter, you can expect to find a bunch of miserable old people as Minehead tops the list with the highest percentage of people over 60, at a whopping 41.5%. It's not cheap living here either, with the average house price coming in at 278000 And whilst the wages here are okay, you have to factor in the petrol prices. If you live in Minehead, you're gonna have to use your car, a lot, for hours a day, which pretty much nullifies the higher wages. In closing, it's okay here for a day out, but I certainly wouldn't want to stay any longer. Number 4. Yeovil Yeovil is affectionately known as Yeovil by locals, and there's a good reason for that. This isolated town has a population of 45,000 people, and they're all just stuck here. Yeovil is seriously isolated, being smack bang in the middle of bigger places like Bristol, Bournemouth and Exeter. All of them would take more than an hour to reach, and that's if you're lucky. And don't you dare think twice about trying to catch a train out of here. On the way to Bristol, the train will be stopping at fields and bowls clubs as it seems anywhere with more than three houses must have a train station for some reason. And if you miss the train, you're screwed. It's a three hour wait for the next one. The town itself is nothing. There are definitely uglier places on this list, but Yeovil is incredibly bland. The people of Yeovil aren't exactly respected. It wouldn't surprise me if the term chav originated here. 
And to go along with that, it has a crime rate of 118 crimes per 1000 people, almost 50% higher than the Somerset average. But you can't blame them too much, there's just nothing to do here. And because you're committed to living in the middle of nowhere, house prices are good, averaging at 225,000 which is 34% lower than the Somerset average. Yeovil used to have a football team in the Football League, the only one in Somerset, but even they were relegated out of the league now. They also have a 24 hour McDonald's, sorry I'm clutching at straws here Yeovil. Number 3, Taunton. Number 3 on this list is Taunton, now the fact that Somerset Council are actually based here is likely the only reason that the town centre isn't completely horrible, and that there are good shops and great transport links. But even the powers that be can't stop it from officially being the most violent town in Somerset, with 93 crimes per 1000 people, 37% above the southwest average. The highest type of crime is vehicle crime, and that's likely because everyone is in a Shaun of the Dead like scramble to get away from the place, and this probably accounts for the awful traffic in and around the area too. If a town's saving grace is its service station, you know you're pissing in the wind. And you may as well be, as this is the middle of nowhere. Taunton just has so much potential to be lovely and it lets itself down at every step. The town centre of small homely businesses could be fantastic if it wasn't for all the boarded up shops and the overweight men hanging out of the bookies. The parks and walks like Vivery and Lingford could offer a nice relaxing walk if it wasn't for the increased chance of coming across one of the people involved in the excessive amount of drug use in Taunton. Recently in the news, a London based drug dealer was caught smuggling 5kg of cocaine and heroin into the area. Now, the place may need a bit of livening up, but not like that. Once considered quite an affluent and posh area, it's like Taunton of recent years can't quite decide what it wants to be. Half the population still cling on to the middle class reputation, whilst the other half have overly embraced their decline and they've taken it to plummeting to new lows. Even a store called Bargain Buys closed down in 2021. When that happens, it really is time to reevaluate your lives. Number 2, Bridgewater. Just avoid this place like the plague, because if you visit here, you may catch something. Bridgewater has tried hard to push an agenda of change and improvement, but stacking up some new cardboard townhouses on the outskirts of this dump doesn't do much for improving this town's image. Bridgewater has always had a negative reputation. It mostly just smelt bad, and I mean really bad. The town was dominated by the smells from a local cellophane factory, which luckily closed its doors in 2005. Talking of closing, there used to be a water park called Bridgewater Splash, which was the only reason anyone from outside of Bridgewater ever visited, but that was also closed because that would be too much fun. This town of 41,276 people is squashed next to the M5 motorway, and I expect most of you have sped past here in an effort to get away as fast as possible. The town is filled with filthy looking terraced houses, brown factories and even browner rivers. The town centre is the most depressing place you could ever visit, it's the worst on this list. Most of the shops are closed down and groups of young men hang around the centre doing nothing. When we visited here to take some drone shots, a group of people approached us saying they love drones because it's what they used in prison. The people of Bridgewater are an interesting bunch. I've only ever seen people like this in one other place, and we're going to get on to that. The people here don't have a lot to do, so naturally crime rates are pretty high for Somerset, coming in at 124 crimes per 1000 people with most crimes being anti-social or violence. It's the most violent medium sized town in Somerset. Bridgewater is also the youngest place on today's list with only 22% of the town being over 60. And there's a good reason for that. One of the only positive for Bridgewater is that the houses are cheap. The average house here is only 210,000 so I guess you could buy somewhere pretty nice on the outskirts and never venture into the town centre. Just jump straight onto the M5 and escape. An alternative escape plan is to catch a train with good regular services between Bristol and Taunton. This is one of those places that the young people from Somerset are forced to live in due to the cheapness of it, but every single one of them can't wait to leave. Also be prepared for everybody to spell the name wrong. The bridge part doesn't have an E in it. Bridgewater might not be number one on this list, but it is the most depressing place on this list. Number one, Western Supermare. I was torn between Weston and Bridgewater for the worst place in Somerset. That was until one massive fact came up which could not be ignored. Weston is very similar to Bridgewater in many respects. The town centre is depressing, the choice of shops is poor and the people hanging around the town centre all look like they've seen better days. Differing to Bridgewater though, Weston has the highest ethnic diversity in Somerset with around 95% of the population being white. It's still not a lot, but it's a fact we needed to include, because people apparently care about that sort of thing. Western Supermare is also the largest place on this list with a population of around 80,000 people and it's on the sea. It used to be a popular tourist destination in the Victorian times. Let's get the good stuff out the way first. Houses are cheap, 
If you're young and looking in the North Somerset area, Weston is likely to be the only place you could afford, with the average house price 250000 It's not the cheapest on this list, but the closer you get to the city of Bristol, the more it goes up. And Weston isn't too far from Bristol. And if you do end up buying here, you don't necessarily need to ever visit the town centre. Bristol Airport isn't very far away, which can save you on airport parking. And the nearby resort of Breen can be fun if you have small children. But that's where the good news ends, I'm afraid. I'll build up to the worst part of Weston, but first. Weston is a nightmare to travel around in the summer. The nearby M5 is always jammed up at rush hour, and the alternatives aren't much better. Every Friday there's a crash on the motorway between Clevedon and Weston. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe people are crashing deliberately because they don't want to go home to their bleak town. But the summer is the absolute worst, because if it's a sunny day, people flock from all around to come and see Weston Sandy Beach. Except it isn't sandy, it's just dark mud. In fact, the only thing darker is the disgusting water which washes alongside it. And if you do want to get in the water, for some reason, good luck, you'll be stuck in the mud. So the roads and the beach is bad, but what else? Weston does have a train station, but since the pandemic, trains only seem to be running hourly and the service wasn't exactly reliable in the first place. It gets worse. In 2010, Weston was home to 11% of the entire country's drug rehabilitation centres, which meant an influx of new characters to Weston. Presumably, the Weston locals were not given a choice in this matter. Which leads me on to Weston's worst part. The reason it's number one on this list, and the reason you need to avoid this place. It's not enough for Weston to be the dreariest looking place with the strangest looking people. No, no. It also has to have the second worst crime in Somerset on top of that. Weston has a crime rate of 90 per 1,000 people, 33% higher than the Somerset average. Yes, Taunton is worse, but I think Taunton has more going for it overall. So Weston has a really high crime rate, but it's just a dump. It's a terrible town centre, no good shops, nowhere good to eat, and it's bad no matter what time of year you choose to visit. Avoid this place like the plague, because if you visit Weston, you're going to catch something for one of the locals.